In this video, I will provide a summary on some fundamental identities of trigonometric functions, and I will also use examples to show how we can apply the fundamental identities to simplify trigonometric expressions and to prove trigonometric identities. We learned about the reciprocal identities when we first introduced the definition of the six trigonometric functions. We learned that cosecant function is the reciprocal function of sine function, therefore cosecant u equals to 1 over sine u. Secant function is the reciprocal of cosine function, and cotangent function is the reciprocal of tangent function. And since the reciprocal relation is mutual, therefore sine u also equals to 1 over cosecant u, cosine u also equals to 1 over secant u, and lastly, tangent u also equals to 1 over cotangent u. Again, we learned about the quotient identities when we first defined tangent function as the quotient of sine and cosine. Therefore, tangent u equals to sine u over cosine u. And since cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent function, therefore cotangent is the quotient of cosine and sine functions. We have already learned the most fundamental Pythagorean identity in trigonometry, which is for any given angle u, its sine value squared plus cosine value squared always equals to 1. And now we're going to derive two alternative forms of the Pythagorean identity based on this equation. First, we take this equation and we divide both sides by cosine u squared. Therefore, this first term, based on the quotient identity, equals to tangent u squared. The second term, since we have the same numerator and denominator, this is simply equals to 1. And the last term, based on the reciprocal identity, equals to secant u squared. Therefore, this equation has now taken the form of tangent u squared plus 1 equals to secant u squared. And then we take the same first Pythagorean identity equation and we divide both sides by sine u squared. Now, the first term equals to 1. The second term, according to the quotient identity, equals to cotangent u squared. And the last term, again, according to the reciprocal identity, equals to cosecant u squared. And now we have the second alternative form of the Pythagorean identity, that 1 plus cotangent u squared equals to cosecant u squared. If you recall, out of the six trigonometric functions, only cosine function and its reciprocal secant function are even functions. The remaining four, sine, tangent, cotangent, and cosecant, are all odd functions. And we learned that for all even functions, this is always true. And since cosine and secant functions are even functions, therefore cosine negative u equals to cosine u, and secant negative u equals to secant u. And for the odd functions, this is always true, that the evaluation of negative x equals to negative fx. Therefore, sine negative u equals to negative sine u, cosecant negative u equals to negative cosecant u, and then tangent negative u equals to negative tangent u, and lastly, cotangent negative u equals to negative cotangent u. To better explain the cofunction identities, let's recall the right triangle definition for trigonometry. In this right triangle with the three sides A, B, and C, for the acute angle U, its adjacent side has a length of A, its opposite side has the length of B, and its hypotenuse side has the length of C. Therefore, according to the right triangle definition, cosine U equals to adjacent side over hypotenuse side, therefore it equals to A over C. However, if we look at the other acute angle in this right triangle. This acute angle is half a pi minus u because their sum equals to half a pi or 90 degree angle. Now, for this other acute angle half a pi minus u, b now is its adjacent side and a now is its opposite side. Therefore, 
a divided by c now equals to sine half a pi minus u. As you can see, cosine u equals to sine half a pi minus u, and this is known as the co-function identity. Key terms here are u and half a pi minus u are complementary angles. If you recall, two angles are complementary angles if they are sum equal to half a pi or 90 degree. And sine and cosine are co-functions. Therefore, according to co-function identity, for any two complementary angles, their co-functions equal to each other. And this can be expanded to the other trigonometric functions. Like this, once again, for any two angles that are mutually complementary angles of each other, they are co-functions equal to each other. Now, how do you know if two functions are co-functions or not? Well, it is right there in the name of the function. Sine and cosine are co-functions, tangent and cotangent are co-functions, and secant and cosecant are co-functions. As an example of the co-function identities, we know that 6 pi and 3rd pi, or 30 degree and 60 degree, are complementary angles because their sum is half a pi, or 90 degree. And we also know that sine 6 pi equals to 1 half, and 1 half is also cosine 3rd pi. And also, cotangent 6 pi equals to square root of 3, but square root of 3 equals to tangent 3rd pi, and etc. Now we have summarized the fundamental identities in trigonometry. Let's see how we can apply those to help simplify trigonometric expressions and to prove trigonometric identity. Like in this example, we need to prove that the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this expression do equal to each other. Since the right-hand side looks quite simple already, let's start with the left-hand side and try to rearrange and rewrite and simplify the left-hand side. Now, the first thing we recognize is this cosine negative x. And since cosine function is an even function, cosine negative x simply equals to cosine x. Therefore, by applying the odd even identity, we rewrite both the cosine negative x into cosine x. And then by applying what we've learned before in algebra, we can add the fractions and then simplify and get to this expression. Now here, as you can see, we have sine x squared plus cosine x squared. And this should look very familiar to you because this is the, once again, most fundamental Pythagorean identity and it equals to one. And the left-hand side has now become this and we can pull out the common factor 2 on the numerator and we can cancel out 1 plus sine x from the numerator and the denominator therefore now the left hand side has been simplified to 2 over cosine x and by applying the reciprocal identity 1 over cosine x equals to secant x therefore the left hand side now becomes 2 secant x and it does equal to the right-hand side. Now this identity has been proven. Let's look at another example. We need to verify this trigonometric identity. Now since the expressions on the left-hand side and the right-hand side both look complicated, we might need to work on both sides and try to simplify both sides to see if they indeed equal to each other. So let's work on the left-hand side first. Recognize this term right here. This should remind you of the co-function identity. Therefore, secant half a pi minus x equals to cosecant x. Therefore, the left-hand side equals to cosecant x squared minus 1. Now the question is, can this expression be further simplified? If you recall, one of the two alternative forms for the Pythagorean identity is 1 plus cotangent u squared equals to cosecant u squared. Therefore, cosecant u squared minus 1 equals to cotangent u squared. Therefore, according to this alternative form of the Pythagorean identity, the left-hand side can now be written as cotangent x squared. 
it seems like we cannot further simplify this expression. So now let's start working on the right hand side. When we work on the right hand side, the first thing we recognize is this sine negative x here. And since sine function is an odd function, sine negative x equals to negative sine x. Therefore, by applying the odd even identity, we can rewrite the right hand side into this form. And the numerator simply equals to 1 minus sine x squared. Now, once again, according to Pythagorean identity, sine x squared plus cosine x squared equals to 1. Therefore, 1 minus sine x squared equals to cosine x squared. And then, recognizing the quotient property, the quotient of cosine and sine is cotangent. Therefore, the right-hand side has now been simplified to cotangent x squared. If you recall, the left-hand side that we worked on previously also equals to cotangent x squared. Therefore, the left-hand side does equal to the right-hand side. This identity now has been proven.